of love betrayed And the innocence Of a child is bought and sold In the name of the damned The rage of the angels left silent and cold Well, I tried to get your attention with the fuck the Super Bowl edition. So um, now that the Patriots are down 21 nothing, it looks like you do need a deflated ball to win, huh, you fucking jerk? <laughs> but anyway, uh, this uh, the show, like I said, I made a post earlier today that the show is plagued because every Sunday it's something like, even right now, the uh, repeats of The Walking Dead are, uh, are happening, so... I don't know. It's just hard to keep an audience with all this other shit that's, you know, going on. So the Super Bowl is an important thing to a lot of people. So that's why I had to strike your attention with the name of this week's episode. Fuck the Super Bowl edition. But anyway, um, my uh, story about the Falcons that I was going to tell is, uh, you know, my dad, um, when he was alive, he died in a motorcycle accident a few years ago. Um you know, he traveled a lot and made friends with a lot of people. So I guess while he was in Atlanta, he's, you know, met a few of the Falcons that played for the team at the time. Um, I guess it may have been during the off season, but one of the guys gave him some t-shirts for me and shit. And I used to wear them. And the only way you could get them is from the player because it was a certain t-shirt that they would wear. So there's a guy in a Seven Eleven here who insisted, you know, he's like, yeah, I know you played for him. I know. I'm like, dude, yep, I did. So every time I went in this 7-Eleven, this guy's like, hey, the Atlanta Falcons guy is here. I'm like, all you got to do is look it up, and you could probably look up the team history and see. But it was just funny. It went on for years. Anytime It was at uh, Seven Springs and 54 over in Newport, Richie. But, I mean, it's not the most interesting story, but... 
Uh, there's a guy who keeps requesting interviews for the show. I got a lot of music to get to. I got a lot of new music as well. Uh, Snake Eye 7, Hydrogen, Satan Takes a Holiday. Um, we got Cats and Yama who's got the segment. Um, I got some stuff going on here. I'm not feeling that well again. Um, my dog isn't doing too well either. She's an old pug, so uh, I got to try to keep my eye on her as well. You know, in the Super Bowl going on, so... Um, but I do have a lot of stuff stuff to get to. A couple of things I want to talk about last week that I didn't really get to. Um, I got some stuff to say about Skid Row again. Um, just some, you know, stories and shit like we used to do. But a guy kept requesting interviews and this and that. You know, I picked a couple of guys and said this. You know, they want me to do the whole fucking roster. It's just not something I'm interested in doing. Um, it's just a pain in the ass. It, it really is. It's just one of those things, you know, as it, the interesting people come through with something to promote, we'll work on it then. But um, till then, it'll just be a few people here and there. Uh, something else I want to talk about is, you know, how these live videos happen on Facebook and shit. You know, a live suicide of a mentally ill teenage girl took place on the Facebook page, uh, face, you know, one of the Facebook live videos. And it's just odd, you know. That, you know, it doesn't get reported, but right away, as soon as you spin a record or you spin a CD, it's, you know, uh, it's something that gets banned right away. I mean, I have problems posting videos and shit, but that's, you know, needless to say, I mean, the live suicide that the girl did, I mean, that's crazy shit. I mean, that that's the world we live in. I mean, everybody's got the shit at their fingertips, but, um, I guess she was Baker acting and whatnot and, um. You know, she decided to do that. So that was something I was going to talk about uh, last week. But I found it interesting how, you know, that video can stay up and, you know, get uh, thousands and thousands of plays before anything even happens. So it's it, it's it's fucking it's a sick world with this social media. It's it's taken over. Everybody's, you know, got their thing. But, you know, how do we protect people from it? I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, I played Skid Row. Um, I'm on a Skid Row kick. I got the. I finally found the version, even though it's the Brazil version of uh, the vinyl of Slave to the Grime with Get the Fuck Out. Um, I found it and I played in the darkened room. Yes, I went to a place called Pat's Patrick's uh, Books and Music up in Hudson, Florida. I was soliciting some business up there and I stumbled upon a record store. So I mentioned the conversation that I had with uh, Prickly Rickly about um, <clears throat> the new guy in Skid Row. And, you know, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, after reevaluating and being on my trip, there's nothing that's ever going to compare, ever going to compare to Sebastian Bach ever. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why Rachel has a stick up his ass about a reunion. Um, you know, it, it's, it's hard to, you know, take a guy back and admit that all these years you were possibly, you know, wrong about being able to be just as successful with, without him. Um, you I'm telling you, he, he was one of the greatest vocalists, um, ever. I mean, even the guy that's singing for him now highly looks up to him. Um, I agree with some of the states statements he made that, you know, that, you know, he's done some wild stuff. That's when I was in my youth, man. That was my fucking theme music. Slave to the grime was so fucking badass. I had friends that were listening to Slayer and all that shit. I mean, I like Slayer, but there was just something about that, the phrasing and the melodies and all of that shit. But I think that's what the bug is up the asses because, it, you know, if if Sebastian Bach does reunite with Skid Row, um, you're going to see a, a fucking stadium tour again and shit. I mean, it, it would be one of the greatest things to see them and fucking Guns N' Roses tour together. Uh, I was fortunate enough to see Skid Row um, come up. I was in the New York area and stuff, so um, they were from Jersey, so... I mean, I didn't get to see a lot of them. I was young. They were, I think they were 19 or something when they put that album out. I was probably about 16 when it came out. 
Uh, the first CD came out in 1989, and then Slave to the Grind came out in 91. Beside Ourselves came out in 92, and then um, I think 95 was uh, the last one. But whatever, whatever the case may be, I think that's the stick up the ass. So who knows? My Falcon story was fucking stupid. Um, you know, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, we need to play. So why don't we play some music? Let's see what we got here. I'm going to play a song by the band. Let's see. I'm going to play another one by Skid Row, that's for sure. But let's get to one of these um, high-volume music bands. You know, uh, some of these record labels and stuff and promotion companies are kind enough to send me the music to play on the show. So I always appreciate that. It's It's hard to keep up with everything. I get thousands of downloads a day. Um, it just happens that this one particular um, promotion company sent in two bands that I, th I think uh, would fit really well on the show. Then you got the guys from Claw Hammer who send in music. I'm going to play two tracks from his uh, bands coming up. And another PR representative sent in uh, a band called Satan Takes a Holiday. So we're going to play some of that. Then I'm going to get into uh, some of the segments here. And Alicia's back with the Rock Metal Talk news at rockmetaltalk.com. Um, John, uh, the Johnny show is still uh, the segment, you know. We all combine and put our efforts together to bring you the best in broadcasting on the internet. But he's still uh, building a new system over at his uh, studio there. So he's going to be off for a couple more weeks. But Alicia's back with the Rock Metal Talk News. We've got the Prickly Rickly segment, so check that out. He's back to filling up the airwaves for me with some music while we got some people down. And uh, we got the Katsunyama. Um, I guess he might take a political view again this week. I don't know. I don't fucking care at this point. Um, if you don't like it, you tune out. If you like it, spread the word. Jay Stone Show is live from Tarpon Springs, Florida at rockmetaltalk.com. Some 